What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna teach you how to make $20 a day playing poker or $600 a month, so let's jump right into it. All right, so I have a lot of small stakes poker players watching this channel. A lot of you guys grind out the lowest stakes games. Some of you guys are even playing for a part-time or even a full-time income. You know, I know it's a shock to many people, especially Westerners, but $20 a day is actually a pretty decent income in many countries in this world. You know, I've talked about for years how I've been living out here in Southeast Asia where you can get the same quality of life as you can in a place like Canada or, or America for like a third of the country or a quarter of the cost in some cases. So today I'm gonna walk you through a couple hands. We're gonna show you how to make around $20 a day playing poker on average. I need to always point that out when nobody makes consistently. Poker is not a game like a regular job where you're just gonna get a paycheck every single day. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The whole point's to have more winning days and losing days. So we're talking about making $20 on average a day playing poker, which again is gonna be about $600 a month, which again is actually pretty decent money in a lot of places in this world. So, and the beautiful thing is you can do this all from the comfort of your own home, playing small stakes poker games like I'm going to talk about today. Now, as you guys know, I've done this for many years myself, even at the very lowest stakes right here, one cent, two cent. I'm known in the past, especially as posting graphs, making over $1,000 a month in these games. Now, albeit I was 24 tabling often, or playing at least 10 tables, often 20 tables, and playing some pretty crazy hours, but it just goes to show that if you understand the right strategy to beat these games, number one, and put in the time and multi-table, you can definitely make some reasonable money. And I'm also gonna show you another hand after this from five cent, 10 cent. That's a $10 buy-in game because that's ultimately going to allow you to make $20 a day playing poker a lot more easily than this $2 buy-in game here. And of course you can make a lot more money in the $10 game as well. But really what I wanna point out to you guys in this video is how my strategy is similar in both of these games. It is heavily, heavily targeted on playing as many pots as possible versus the recreational players. These are the fun players as we call them, the fish, the people that are often, you know, are just playing on the weekends, having a beer, watching the game. Basically, they don't take the game seriously and for small amounts of money like this especially, they definitely don't take it seriously. They're in there splashing around with all sorts of hands and they ultimately lose their money at a prolific pace over the long run. So one of our best ways to win versus these players is going to be making big hands, specifically sets, which is also known as three of a kind. And I'm gonna walk you through a couple of examples of this today. So let's jump right into it. So in the first hand, we got pocket deuces. We're playing once again, a one cent, two cent blinds game here online. And the max buy-in for this game is $2. However, we have $4 actually here. We got a double buy-in. So it's important to remember that for now. So the beautiful thing now about these low stakes games is as you guys can see here, this is how a lot of times one cent, two cent, specifically online tends to play. You get a lot of people in there playing every ridiculous hand possible. Uh, you get a lot of you know family pots where everyone's just in there. Oh, I got ace eight. Oh, I got uh, four or five off suit. And everybody's just in the middle. It's almost like play money. It is extremely important to find tables like this. We can already see we've got a couple limpers and we've got seat six raising here. Because if you can get in there with a small pocket pair like this, this we're gonna make the call here with our pocket deuces if we are able to hit another two on the flop we could potentially win an enormous pot against a lot of these weak recreational players who simply don't know how to fold when they hit top pair with their ace eight or whatever they have king ten or whatever so we do make the call with our pocket deuces it's also important to note that we have the button in this hand which is always important because it's going to allow us to win a lot more money if we're able to hit our hand and also get away cheaply if we want to, if we didn't hit our hand. So both of the blinds get out of the way and now seat four, it's back on him. This is the original limper. He is gonna go ahead and make a limp min three bet. Now, this is the kind of wacky stuff you guys see in this game. None of these players really understand sort of the math behind the game and how this min three bet is really, really just a disaster from a mathematical point of view because everyone can just call 
here with their whatever and have unlimited implied odds against this player. This player is essentially just rolling out the red carpet for everyone to get involved here and to potentially crack the big hand that he's representing because he's simply not re-raising anywhere near enough in order to make anyone else even consider folding. So now seat number four is a recreational player. In fact, every single player in this hand is a recreational player. These are the kind of players that are playing about 50% of their hands on average. Like I said, they're in there with all sorts of nonsense, king seven offsuit, jack 10, five deuce. I mean, anything that looks pretty to them that they like. I mean, they've got all sorts of superstitious hands. Oh, I really like eight five of clubs. I, I mean, it's anything, honestly. So seat number five makes the call as well. Seat number six makes the call. And so now we're getting like, you know, 18 to one in the pot or something to make the call here uh, with our pocket deuce. So this is just gonna be a slam dunk situation. We're just in here hoping to hit our sets. We're gonna make the call. We're gonna go see a flop. So we do manage to smack our set on the flop here. This is how you make the money in poker, like I mentioned off the top, especially in these small stakes games. So now I want to specifically discuss extraction. This is something I talk about heavily in my first book, Crushing the Micro Stakes, is how do we win the absolute maximum in this situation here? Now, for a lot of you guys who are beginners watching this video, I want you to understand a lot of people don't realize the power of this hand here, which is called a set. Our hand is extremely well hidden. When you have a pocket pair and you hit another one on the flop to make three of a kind, it is extremely well hidden as opposed to trips, a lot of people get this mixed up, trips and a set are not the same thing. Trips in this situation would be if the flop came queen, deuce, deuce, and we were holding a hand like deuce three. Now we wouldn't even normally be playing that hand, but just for illustrative purposes, that hand is not as powerful as a set here because a set is much more hidden. When there are two cards of the same on the flop, people can notice that right away and they're always going to be asking themselves, mm, does that guy have that card there for three of a kind? Whereas when you have a set like we have here, it is much more well hidden and that is why statistically you're going to win way more in poker when you have a set as opposed to trips. So I just wanted to point that out for all you beginners that are watching this video. All right, so as mentioned, we are going to be last to act here because we are on the button. This is absolutely beautiful. So seat number four, he is gonna come in for the pot size bet. He bets 72 cents into 75 cents. Seat number five makes the call. Once again, these are all recreational players in this hand, guys. These are the kind of games you can find in these, especially at the very lowest stakes. It's not even worth me trying to put them on a range because again, they're playing like half the deck. There's all sorts of stuff that they can have. They can certainly have a queen, they can have a four, they can have some sort of straight draw like five, three. They're playing all of these types of hands. Whereas with a normal player, you might say, well, a decent player is not gonna be in there with five, three, so we can discount that. But with recreational players, they can literally have anything. But the facts are, we have the third best hand possible at this point, so we're not really worried about anything. There are no flush draws on this board, so we are in very good shape. So seat number six makes the call as well. Apparently everybody's got something on this board. So what should we be doing in a spot like this? Well, normally I am a big fan of just going ahead and making the raise in a spot like this. But I think in a situation like this where the board is so incredibly dry and it's so heavily unlikely that anybody actually has anything. I think this is the one situation where I will just flat in order to get some more deception value for my hand and get more money in on later streets. So we do in fact make the call and we'll go see a turn. So the turn comes with a three. It really doesn't change anything much. It doesn't complete. I mean, the only sort of legitimate straight draw out there, five, three, just has a pair now. It's, we're still in very good shape. So seat number four decides to go all in for his final 42 cents. Seat number five comes over the top and he shoves all his money in as well. Got too hot in the kitchen for seat number six. He's out of the way. So I don't really think I need to discuss the strategy really anymore in this hand, guys. It's just get all the money in. 
This is the kind of wacky plays that you're gonna see sometimes in these low stakes games like NL2. And that's why I'm always talking about just get in hands versus these crazy wacky players, hit your set. We're gonna go ahead and make the call, of course, and we'll go see a showdown. So they have queen 10, that guy's drawn completely dead. The other guy's got ace eight offsuit, and I guess he could hit a five on the river. That's not gonna happen. We're gonna fill up, hit our boat. And we're gonna take both the main pot and the side pot there, and we're gonna win about 200 big blinds in this hand, about $4. So now I have another hand lined up here in a second to show you how we can make money like this in higher stakes games as well. But I hope this hand just goes to show the kind of crazy hands that these players are playing, these recreational players and why it's so important to get involved with them. And if you want to make $20 a day playing poker, these are the kind of players you want at your table. All right, so let's get on to hand number two here. All right, guys, so here's the second hand here. Again, we're going to bump up the stakes now. We're playing six max, five cent, 10 cent now. And the beautiful thing, of course, in this game is it's five times the stakes of the hand that we just talked about. So in order to make $20 a day playing poker, you're only going to have to win two buy-ins in this game as compared to five in the other game. And obviously, just a little bit of simple math, it's going to be a lot easier for us to do. The competition is a little bit better once you jump up the stakes a little bit like this. But we still need to remember that NL10 here, 5 cent, 10 cent blinds is still extremely low stakes. It is still very easy to find all sorts of recreational players, especially if you're playing at the right time, especially on a weekend, for instance. You can find large whales in this game that will hand over their money if you can make a big hand against them. So we have pocket tens here under the gun. We're gonna come in for our standard raise, of course. And seat number five is going to make the call behind us. He is the recreational player in this game. He's playing a 58-22-2. That is VPIP, PFR, and Aggression Factor. Those are HUD stats, by the way. If you want more information on how to get these numbers on your screen, I'll include links to everything in the description below. Basically, that is 100% a recreational player. So it folds around and everybody else folds and we're going to go see a flop. All right, so you guys probably get what's going on here. Hit sets, win money. We managed to nail another set here. Now, pocket tens is a hand that's strong enough on its own that we can actually make a lot of money without hitting our set, but obviously it is a huge benefit if we can hit our set. Again, it's how we make the big money in these games. It's how you're gonna make $20 a day playing poker on average is looking for sets like this. Remember, this is not three of a kind, this is a set here. Now, there's a huge difference between this flop and the flop in the first hand that I hope you guys have already noticed. This flop is very, very action heavy. It's extremely wet and coordinated as we call it. Wet meaning typically refers to having a flush draw, which there's two clubs on board there. And when I say a flop is extremely coordinated, it means that there are a ton of different straight draws, possibilities on this board, two pairs and stuff like that. You know, I could go down the list in this hand here. There's a couple made straights with queen nine and seven nine, but there's just innumerable amounts of various gut shots, open-ended straight draws. I mean, if anyone has a nine, and anything else in their hand, they have an, an open-ended straight draw. King Queen is an open-ended straight draw. Nine six is a gut shot. There's so many straight draws, it's hard to even name them all. And of course, all the flush draws as well. So the reason that I'm pointing all this out is that we're going to have a different strategy in this hand with this set in order to get all the money in the middle. And also we are going to be first to act in this hand, which is going to change the dynamic as well. So something that I've talked about many times in previous videos in the past couple weeks, especially, and also in my poker books as well, is that one of the absolute best ways to get the most money in the middle when you're playing poker, when you want to win a big pot, which is exactly what we always want to do, but especially when we have a set like this, is to go for the check raise. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this hand here. We're going to go for the check because we know that a player like this, especially on a extremely draw heavy board like this is very likely to have found a piece of this board somehow and is very likely to make a bet which is exactly what he does he bets about three quarter pot 
And what this is going to allow us to do now is spring the trap, make the big check raise, and trap the maximum amount of money in the middle. Now this player is gonna go ahead and make the call. Again, there's so many draws on this board, we're not surprised this player made the call. And we're going to proceed to a turn now. Hopefully we get a decent card on the turn. That's exactly what we get. We get the three of diamonds. So there's many different ways to play this at this point. Um, I'm typically not a big fan of going for a double check raise. Typically when I do check raise on the flop, I prefer to just come out with a bet on the turn now. And the reason why is because when we check raise on the flop, that puts us once again in the driver's seat of the hand. And if we go for a check again on the turn here, there's a lot of players, even recreational players, are going to be like, hmm, maybe I'll just check behind and take my free equity, which is obviously not something we want him to do. So I'm pretty much always going to be betting here, unless I am against just a complete and utter maniac. And that's not actually the case in this hand. We're up against one of these regular kind of fish. But so we could just go ahead and make a standard bet in this situation of say $3, but it absolutely is fine to just shove all in here, which is what we're going to do. Again, I talk about this in Crushing the Microstakes, my first book, that over bets versus the recreational players can often be extremely profitable in these games because they view them as a bluff. Remember, it's important to understand that poker is a psychological game. And when you have certain players like the recreational players that see a big bet, for example, as a bluff if that's how they think about the game then really what we want to do is just do the exact opposite we're going to make this play when we have the big hand like this and they're going to make a poor decision like this player is going to make in this hand let's flip him over let's see what he's got he's got jack queen so he's got a nine to save his life see if he hits that he does not hit it on the river and ship the 20 almost 20 dollar pot to us guys i hope that these two hands sort of gave you an idea of how i extract the maximum value versus the weaker recreational players in small stakes games like this and really this is going to be your bread and butter if you want to make around 20 dollars a day playing poker you know around 600 dollars a month once again a decent amount of money for a lot of people even a full-time income in some cases for many people or a solid side income so you know it absolutely is possible to do this if you play in the right games now you're going to have to play consistently and i would highly Highly recommend multi-tabling as well but the real point that I wanted to show you guys in this video is the best way for you guys to achieve consistent results in these low stakes games is a lot of just set mining and waiting for your aces and big hands in general in these games and then absolutely making sure you get the maximum value every single time this is one of the biggest reasons why people fail to win big in these games is because they don't extract the maximum value. Guys, I wrote an entire book about this crush of the micro stakes because I've seen so many players screw up their results so badly in these games because they're making improper decisions on when they should be slow playing versus fast playing. And I hope that these two hands gave you two different strategies. In one hand, we were in position. In one hand, we were out of position. And how we extract the max value. We got the maximum value in both hands. And that is exactly how you're going to make $20 a day on average in poker. So anyways, as always, though, I want to know what you guys think. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you make $20 a day playing poker on average? Do you think it's possible? Do you think I'm completely out to lunch here and poker is impossible to beat now? Nobody wins anymore. Everyone's losing $20 a day on average. Maybe you're making $200 a day. Let me know how it's going for you either way in the comments below. And if you guys enjoy watching poker videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channels. I'm putting them out every single week to help you guys out in these small stakes games that you guys are actually playing. And I'm not showing any million dollar pots in this channel, guys. There's already enough YouTube channels out there that are just all to wow you with the big money, the big million dollar pot. But we all know that the vast majority of you guys that are watching these videos, watching poker videos online, on YouTube here, you're not playing in million dollar games. So while they're cute and fun to watch sometimes, they're not really gonna help you out. So that's really what I'm trying to do with this channel, give you guys advice to help you guys actually have real results in the games that you're actually playing in. If you found this video helpful, make sure you shove all in on that like button as well. I appreciate it. 
And lastly, if you want to know my complete strategy for crushing small stakes games like this, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Massive Profit at the Micros. That'll be the top link in the description below. Roughly about 50 pages. You can read it in an afternoon. And once again, that'll give you my entire strategy for beating small stakes games like this. Lastly, I'll leave a video that I made last week up here that I think will help you guys out even more. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope this video gave you guys a couple pointers if you're trying to consistently make some decent money in small stakes games like $20 a day. So I want to thank you for watching. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.